Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have some Dollar Tree fall DIYs for you. So if that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. Also, don't forget to do all the youtube -y things. If you enjoy this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you're new, my name's Melissa. I love to do all things crafty on a budget. So if that's something that interests you, definitely click that red subscribe button. Share it with your family and friends if you think that they would enjoy it as well. And with all that being said, let's jump into today's video. Okay guys, so let's start off with six 8x10 canvases from Dollar Tree and I take all of the plastic off. I then use my staple pole that I got from Dollar Tree. You guys, I love this thing. If you don't have one, definitely pick one up. I got mine at Walmart. It was on clearance, so I'm not too sure if they still carry it, but I'm pretty sure that Amazon has one. And I'm just showing you how quick, and it only took me 12 minutes to pull all of the staples out of six of these large canvases. So once I had those cleaned up and I took the canvas off and the staples, then I have my little helper here and we painted all of the frame, all of the frames with my white Waverly chalk paint. I then use my plaid crackle medium once the white paint is completely dry and I give these a really good coat of the crackle medium and then you also want to let these completely dry. Now I used a hair dryer to complete the drying process because I am extremely extremely impatient but I do believe if you let them air dry then the crackle process looks even better. So that's just a little tip I have noticed that in the in the past that if I let it dry on its own it crackles a lot more but again I'm impatient and um, it looks beautiful in the end so I'm not too worried about it now with crackle medium you want to put a base layer down put the crackle medium on top and then you take your next color and you do not want to brush too many strokes so as you can see um, I pretty much just laid the paint down and then tried to keep it to like one or two swipes across my piece. Once the orange was dry and that crackle effect came through, then I dry brush all of the frames as well with my truffle Waverly chalk paint and my mini chip brush. Now I get a lot of questions on what dry brushing is. Dry brushing is when you take a dry brush, you put a little bit of paint on the end, dab off the excess, and then kind of just make some strokes over your paint or over your piece. You can go heavier or lighter. It's honestly totally up to you. Some people like distressing, some people don't, but I personally do. So next, I just glue all of the frames together with some wood glue and some hot glue. The wood glue is gonna make sure that your piece stays together and last, and then the hot glue is going to hold it quickly. And then I take my chicken wire from Dollar Tree. I start by unraveling a little bit, stapling it to one side, that way it's much easier to pull across the first half of our piece. I then staple it all down to make sure it doesn't go anywhere and then I cut off the excess. I repeat the same step for the bottom side. Next I take this bamboo wreath from Dollar Tree, I cut the tag off and then I also pull a bunch of floral from my stash. I just recently did a huge Walmart um, floral haul. I also compared some of the Dollar Tree florals and just kind of gave some of my thoughts on um, which is the better deal. So if you want to check that out, I will leave that in the cards in the right hand corner. But I do just take this beautiful greenery that I got from Walmart. It was very inexpensive. I believe I paid $3.47 for this big bush. And I just start by cutting some of the picks off and then I 
take the edge of the floral pick and just kind of weave it through where the jute was holding the bamboo wreath together and then glue it down so that it doesn't stick up. I also got this wheat bush from Walmart. It's the mainstays and I also believe I paid $3.47 for it and it's just beautiful you guys. It's so realistic. So I did cut the wheat off as well as those corn husks and I did the exact same thing. Now keep in mind, just like many things with crafting, wreaths are a personal preference, so you might like more wheat than I do, or more corn husks than I do, so do your wreath up however you like it, and some people also like to put the greenery in different directions, or you know, the pieces in different directions. I personally like them to go all in one direction, but again, you do what you like. So I had this little piece left over from last week's project. If you haven't seen my Christmas in July video, I will also leave that video in the cards in the right hand corner. You definitely don't want to miss it. It was a good one. I loved all the projects, but I did pull off that little piece from one of the tag signs from last year around Christmas at Dollar Tree. And I always save my pieces, so this is exactly why you don't want to throw anything out. So I took that little piece, I flipped it over, and gave it a distressed coat of my cashew Waverly chalk paint. And then I take this Hello, I Love You Transfer by Chalk Couture. I cut it down because there's two pieces to it, fuzz it really good, you want to fuzz this so that way when you pull it up it doesn't stick and stretch your transfer that way you can use it over and over again and then I just transfer on the hello right into the middle and then the little pattern on each side with my black chalk paste. I definitely will leave all the chalk couture uh, products that I used in the description box below in my link tree link it'll say chalk couture products used here just click that link and then you can click the top link if you are watching this video within the week that it came out but I just kind of lay the little hello sign on the wreath to see how I liked it and then I glued it down and I wanted it to be kind of on an angle and then I glue it down to our piece. Last but not least, I go in with my Cashew Waverly chalk paint just to bring all those colors together and I just dry brush some of that paint all over the place. Again, just bringing it all together and I just love the way that it turned out. Um, I love the way that it looked before I dry brushed this color on, but I really think that this really makes all those colors in the wreath pop and just makes it look gorgeous together. You guys, I love this, the green in the wreath and I cannot wait to put this up for fall. So definitely let me know in the comments down below, like I said, what you guys think of this project. So on my channel each week, I love to show you guys my earrings of the week. So this week's earrings of the week are these beautiful gold and they have a little bit of like silver glitter in them so I thought that they were perfect for this gray shirt as always you guys know I love to get my earrings from Walmart so of course that's where I got them every week when I go I look to see if they have something different and new and of course they always do so I always like to pick them up because you guys literally that's like the only store around so anyway if you guys like these earrings definitely check out your Walmart if you would like to send me a pair of earrings to feature on the earrings of the week my PO box information is in the description box below and with all that being said let's jump back into today's video Okay, party people, let's move on to the next project. So I take three of these beware signs that I got last year around fall and Halloween at Dollar Tree. I take the tags off and then I lay them side by side, face up, and I glue them down the seams and put some large popsicle sticks over the glue to hold these together. 
Now, because these have so much glitter, and glitter is my arch nemesis, especially when I'm trying to hang them up, I take some brown craft paper and I cover the back. Now, you guys, I found some absolutely amazing signs from Dollar Tree. I bought way too much stuff, so if you guys want to see a huge, huge, huge Dollar Tree haul, let me know in the comments down below. So, once I had the back covered, then I take my quarter inch dowel rods and I measure out the frame, mark my dowels, and then cut them down. Now, you always want to measure twice, cut once, and... In the end, you'll see that I still ended up cutting them too short. So when you make your mark, you want to take into account the blade width, and I always forget to do that. So just make sure you cut a tiny, tiny bit past that line. That way you cut exactly what you need. So I take it to my little mini miter saw. I have this linked in my Amazon store. I always get lots of questions about this. So I do have it linked in my link tree as well. Um, but anyway, once I had those cut down, then I use my mini zip sander, which again, I get a zillion questions on. And most of the products that I use are linked in my Amazon store, so always check there. But I do just sand down those rough edges because this dowel rod is a little bit thick than the ones I norm thicker. <laughs> it's a little bit thicker than the ones I normally use. Um, it doesn't cut all the way through. It leaves like this little tiny piece. So I do just cut that off, sand down the edges, and then use my homemade stain to stain three sides of these. Once they're dry, then I take my bigger zip sander and I just kind of sand those edges to do like a distressing, but it just makes it look old and weathered and rustic and that's the type of look I was going for so if you don't like that look then you can totally skip that step. I then just give this entire sign a distressed coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. Once the chalk paint was dry then I go in with my pumpkin chalk paint and a big brush I believe this is called yeah this is a big chip brush and I just very, very, very lightly dry brush a little bit of that pumpkin Waverly chalk paint all over, as well as my antique wax. I then take my Harvest Festival Transfer by Chalk Couture. Now, this is also going to be linked. Keep in mind, you guys, this is a huge transfer. So I, they do have you cut it up because it's just much easier to work with when you have pieces instead of one big transfer. So I do just lay it out on my sign. I mark where each piece needs to lay. That way I can have it nice and even. And then I start with my first piece that says fresh local and it has the little wheelbarrow it's so so cute and i fuzz 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 the crap out of it i lay it down and then i pick out the colors that i like i will also leave all of these in one link so basically the link will put like when you click the link it'll put all of the products that i used into your cart from that cart obviously you can add and subtract as you like so you can just buy the transfer you can just buy a squeegee it's totally up to you but i do just like to put it all in one spot that way it's much easier for everybody to find so i transferred on the fresh local with my black chalk paste I transferred on the little greenery with, it's called Jade. And then for the wheelbarrow, 
for the wheelbarrow. I used papaya for the pumpkins, black for the wheelbarrow, and then my camel for um, the little handles and stuff. And then I pull it back and look how beautifully amazing this is, you guys. That's my favorite part about Chalk Couture. I don't have time to weed and design stuff on the computer all the time. I just grab the transfer I want, peel it off, fuzz it, lay it down, paste, and reveal it. I then just wash my transfer. You always want to wash your transfers really, really good. And immediately after using them, that way they last you can get upwards of 50 uses out of each transfer as long as you take care of them. So I then do the second piece and obviously I do that with black. And then for the third piece, I go in with an array of different fall colors. To get an ombre effect with chalk couture, it's so, so easy. So what you want to do is put your first color halfway down and then put your second color the rest of the way and then just spray your finger with a little bit of water and kind of go in circular motions all the way down. If it gets a little bit dry, wipe your finger off on a paper towel or baby wipe, spray it again and repeat that step. Once I peel back my transfer, I am so excited and happy to see my design. And then I just take some hot glue and I glue down my frame pieces. Now, I always like to start with the top or the bottom, do the sides, and then put the top or bottom on just so that way you can make sure that it's going to fit together correctly because you're going to see here in a minute why I said that even though I measured twice and cut once, I still cut them a little bit too short, which really is not a big deal. All I did was take my utility knife, just scored that extra edge a few times, and then I just took my pliers to pop it off because it's the like scalloped edges on this sign. Um, I did just want to make sure that it separated from the sign really nicely and then once I had those all cut off then I do flip it over and just sand that down smooth and you cannot even tell that I even messed it up so no harm no foul very fixable I tell you guys I make mistakes all the time just like you guys do so if I can do it I know that you can do it and this sign was easy peasy especially with chalk couture so let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of this sign So I just wanted to remind you guys, check my last video, my Christmas in July. If you are watching this after August 6th, the giveaway is closed, but definitely go over to that video, like it, comment your favorite movie, share it with someone who you think would enjoy it, and for an extra entry into the huge box of goodies with Dollar Tree items and more, it's about a $30 value click the link in the description box. It is to join my VIP group on Facebook and you will get an extra entry. So because I love you guys so much and these pumpkins are an online exclusive at Dollar Tree, I will throw three of the pumpkins that I used in this project in that box so that way you guys can do the project as well. So I take three of these pumpkins from Dollar Tree. I take two of the fatter ones and one of the taller ones and I paint the first pumpkin with I mix some pumpkin and some of that cashew to make a lighter orange I then just highlight it with some of that pumpkin the second pumpkin I paint with the cashew and then the third pumpkin I paint with the moss waverly chalk paint
Okay, so this is a technique I love to do to just kind of bring all the colors together when I'm doing a piece like this. So I just take the brushes from the other colors and while the paint is still wet, I kind of dry brush some streaks through the wet paint again to just tie all of the colors together. If you don't like that look, you can skip it, but I personally do. Um, so anyway, so I was trying to think of something unique to put these on and then from a previous project that I never used, I glued three of these smaller boxes from Dollar Tree together. So I just flip it over and pull the tags off of it. And then I take a piece of scrapbook paper that's kind of like a faux wood look I measure it and then I glue it down on top of the boxes with my disappearing purple glue stick My little Bella is right here with me. She's up from her nap, so if you hear her, that's why. But I do just take my utility knife and kind of put the box on an angle and just cut that excess scrapbook paper off. Next, I go in with my antique wax and my chip brush, and I just dry brush the edges as well as the middle, again, just to make these look weathered and bring all of my pieces together. So because these boxes are upside down, um, you have to take the labels off and flip them around. So that's what I did. And when I went to screw them back down into the same holes, they were a little bit crooked. So I did just straighten them up and I screwed them back down, making sure that I covered the old holes. Next, I take my Autumn Phrases Transfer. This comes with three different phrases and I just cut those apart. And then I take this wooden banner piece that I got from Amazon. I got a pack, I think, of like 50 of them. So I just take my utility knife and they were really easy to cut through because they're just really thin wood. And I just cut the holes off of the top and then I cut it in half. I then just cut it kind of like on an angle so that the end looked like an arrow. Next, I take my faux stain that I made and if you guys want to make this, I just took some truffle Waverly chalk paint, some a little tiny bit of ink Waverly chalk paint and some water and I mixed it up really well. So once I had that stained and it was dry, then I go in with my mini chip brush and that cashew cream color and just dry brush around the edges as well as a little bit in the middle. I then take my You Are the Pick of the Patch transfer and I lay that down and then transfer on the wording with my white chalk paste. I transferred on the pumpkin with shimmer pumpkin and then for the stem I used camel. And now for my absolute favorite part, I peel back that transfer and reveal an absolutely gorgeous image. Next, I take some raffia, and I had some cream colored and green raffia, so I took two strands of each and made a bow out of it. I then made a bow with some Dollar Tree ribbon, and then I take this berry garland from Dollar Tree, the green and the white. I wrap it around my pencil a bunch of times and then cut it in half. I then take the middle pumpkin, put a bead of hot glue in the back, and attach both of those wired berries or pit berries, whatever you want to call it, and I just glue those down on either side. I also glued both of the ribbons down to the top of either side of the shorter pumpkins, and now it's time to put it all together. So I start with some Jenga blocks from Dollar Tree after kind of arranging the pit berries like I like. I wanted them to kind of look like the vines and 
the bottom of these pumpkins are kind of like scalloped so there was only a little tiny edge that would have been glued to the bottom piece so that's why i put the jenga blocks on the bottom that way they had a little bit of weight and something to glue to and then i glued the middle one down and then the two kind of like on an angle if that makes sense if that doesn't make any sense you can see what i did here and then i just took some hot glue and glued that sign right into the middle of the pumpkins at the bottom now i was going to be done here you guys this is actually the next day so i came out to stage all my projects and i felt that it was missing a little something so my sweet subscriber Cindy sent me a bunch, of, a bunch of craft supplies and these were in there. I'm pretty sure she got these at the Target dollar spot. So I didn't do much to them. All I did was take some antique wax, dry brushed it to the leaves and then just put them on the pumpkins as I liked. And now look at it you guys. I absolutely love the way that this turned out. Per usual, I cannot pick a favorite project, so I know you'll let me know in the comments down below which project was your favorite. I am so grateful that you guys are here. If you haven't clicked that red subscribe button, you might as well become part of my crafty family. That way you don't miss another Dollar Tree moment. The holidays are coming. I am so excited for it. I have so many ideas in store and I cannot wait to show you guys how to do them. So also don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Share it with your family and friends if you think that they would enjoy it as well because all those things really help my channel to grow and help YouTube to notice me just a bit more. So with all that being said, thank you guys so much for being here. I am grateful for each and every one of you. And if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning. You are worthy and I love you with all my heart and soul. You are special. You are amazing. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.